A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we love God because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For whoever does not love a brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. This is the commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern the people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. From fraud and violence he shall redeem them, and precious shall their blood be in his sight. May they be prayed for continually. Day by day shall they bless him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. May his name be blessed forever, as long as the Son, his Son, shall, his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. All the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He enrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. And he said to them, today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing and all spoke highly of him, and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise On these weekdays of Christmas, we are continuing to celebrate epiphanies, We usually think of Epiphany as what we celebrated last Sunday as the visit of the Magi, but there's actually many Epiphanies that are involved in the revealing of Jesus, the manifestation of Jesus, and all this week we've been seeing that and feeding the thousands 
with the multiplication of loaves and fish, with the walking on the water and the calming of the storm. And now today he, he goes to his hometown of Nazareth where he, as it is the Sabbath day, a Saturday, and as the custom, usually one of the rabbis or anyone in the audience would be invited to come up to proclaim the scriptures for that Sabbath. But Jesus, he didn't read the ordinary cycle of whatever was chosen for that day. He, he went to, I believe it's Isaiah chapter 61, where he reads these beautiful words. And again, it's an epiphany. This is the only recorded instance of our Lord reading scripture. And so you figure if it's the only time it's recorded, not that Jesus would know that, well, he knows everything, but uh, as Luke would see it and record it, as Luke chooses this moment, you know it's going to be important words, not just any old casual prophecy or whatever. It's going to be an important one. And so these are words to heed very carefully. And of course, it's from these words which of course are fulfilled in Jesus. They are prophesizing the Messiah. God has anointed him. He is here to bring good news, glad tidings to the poor, proclaim liberty to captives, recovery to sight to, to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. And from those words, of course, the church gets its great missionary spirit and all these many, many centuries of all the great charitable work that the, that the church has done, of course, are inspired by these words because this is what our Lord did. But let's put that aside for the moment. The external mission of the church, which is important for us to always keep that in our view, but also equally important is how are these words applying to me in the very depths of my being? Do I recognize that the Lord is bringing me the best news of all in the world, a world that's too often filled with bad news, that indeed our Lord is freeing me who is so easily captive by sin and all the other things that can hold me hostage. The Lord indeed is taking away the blindness, not so much of my physical sight, but the blindness of my heart. And he is freeing me from my slavery. The only way we can really appreciate those words, of course, is to have that intimate, personal relationship with Christ. And I think it's so easy for us Catholics to, uh, first of all, those words, a personal relationship with Jesus, it's very Protestant sounding to us Catholics, first of all, but it's nothing new. Read all the stories of the great mystics of the church. What are they really doing when they have their mystical experiences? They're having a personal encounter relationship with Jesus. It's nothing new at all. And it's not just for that exclusive little group that we call mystics. We're all called to have that mystical experience. And it's possible. And it's real. But we have to believe it. And once we start entering into that very life of Christ, that he's not just something out there or someone who came into this world 2,000 years ago, but that he's really right here, right now, and he's with me, and he embraces me, and he loves me incredibly, beyond my imagination. Once we start dwelling on that over and over and over in our daily lives, then these words start becoming so alive to us, and we see how he can take any impossible situation of our life, any burden that's there, and turn it around into something wonderful and beautiful. And that's what his love is. And that's the love that St. John has been talking about in these beautiful letters that we've been reading from him in this Christmas time. If you get a chance today, just 
Take those words of Jesus again from Isaiah, I believe it's chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me. And he has come to bring glad tidings to the poor. Send me to proclaim liberty to captives, recovery of sight to the blind. Let the oppressed go free to proclaim a year of jubilee, a time of acceptable to God. Those words are spoken for us, each and every one of us, individually. But we need to feel it and experience it. We have heard you call, loving God. We gather our prayers for our brothers and sisters. For our Holy Father, may God grant him strength to continue to inspire us with his outreach to all and his mercy to those in need. Let us pray. For all those estranged from the church and separated from our community, may we seek them out and offer them invitation to return. Let us pray. For all those in prison who are forced to become refugees in strange lands because of violence, and for all those who live in fear, let us pray. For all the men and women in religious life who have retired from active ministry, let us pray. And let us pray for healing for all who are sick. And especially let us pray for Father Luke Strand for his continued healing the intention of our Mass today, let us pray. And we pray for all who have died, all our loved ones, and especially let us remember the priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father Walter Tuschel in 1970. May they all be rejoicing now in the eternal glory of God in heaven. Let us pray. God, our life and our hope, hear us today. Help us to answer our call from you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.